I'm, I want to talk about the um, article that came out, I think, last month uh, that Jessica uh, Mangoda wrote, mm-hmm. uh, breaking down the barriers to a functional diversity and inclusion program. It was a great article, and I loved one of the things. It, it makes sense now that I hear more about measurable and what you guys are doing, but I love your focus on, on data mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and, and looking at the data within the community and within your organization and looking at it from a pure like numbers sense and what that means and that it's not, it's bigger than just um, a, a male female problem. It, it's bigger than that. Like what does diversity really mean to your organization? Mm-hmm. And I love that you guys are, that you're having those conversations. Um, can Tell me a little bit more about like what, what does a diversity inclusion program look like? Yeah, it, it's definitely multifaceted and it like really touches every organization of like every component of our business in a lot of different ways. You know, diversity is looking at maybe some things that you can see and tell and connect with people. And sometimes it's things that you maybe not be able to see as well. Um, and how you be intentional with it is is definitely, definitely important. And so when you talk about diversity and you talk about inclusion, they are two very different things. And when you look at inclusion at our in our business, and this is something that we, is always driving back to intention around everything that we do, us being a, a decent amount of remote employees at our at our company, um, the challenges of our, how do we continuously make sure they feel included in every bit of our culture, all the things that we're doing, how do we how do you make sure that you f- make sure everyone in your business feels a part of the community, and that is what inclusion is in a lot of different ways and yeah. um, it's making sure that our remote team can see um, you know our team meeting from the perspective perspective is that they're sitting right there um, it's making sure that when we order food at our company that those that have food allergies have been addressed and that they're feeling included and not feeling different or feeling excluded in some ways if we're all going out to grab a beer, there's definitely people in our organization who don't drink alcohol. How can we make sure we're picking a place that also makes them feel a part of the team and the community, depending on what actions or community things that you're doing? It's, it goes into so many, so many different things. When you're interviewing, if you're sitting in a room, are there people who I can connect and identify with? Um, do we have diversity at the table to make sure they feel included in that community is is huge. And, you know, I definitely want to tell a story of a few weeks ago. I was talking to our, our CTO and he was like, yeah, oh, my gosh. He's like, I'm so excited. You're going to be so proud. We're interviewing um, this female candidate for this front end position. It's so exciting. And he goes, he kind of stops. He goes, oh, no. He's like, we don't have any women in the room for her interview. And he's like, oh, my gosh can you please sit in that interview to make sure she feels included? I, I, it was like one of the <laughs> proudest moments of, of, of my career so far to be like, absolutely, Lance. I probably have no questions to vet her ability to do this job, but I will sit in that room to make sure that she feels included. Um, and I'm sure Rachel will uh, listen to this later because we did hire her and she's joining <laughs> us soon. Um, but that's you know some of the things to think about of how do you make sure people feel part of the community, whether they're in their community or assessing if they're going to be a part of the community. So that's a little bit of our approach and some of the practical things that we've done. And when you put those things on top of your mind, people start realizing, oh, I wouldn't have thought about this before if we hadn't really been talking about how to pe- make people feel included. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, that's a great story. Uh, and I, I love the that you're looking at all those different aspects of making sure everyone feels included. Uh, I, I learn, we work really hard on our, with our teaching staff and make sure that there's diversity there in all of the different, not just, um, you know, we, we try and make sure there's there's men and there's women and, and people of color and different things, uh, different backgrounds, um, but also different levels of experience and um, and and different industries mm-hmm. and things like that. And that being intentional about those things is, is the only way we can make change. Absolutely. It's it 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 doesn't necessarily seem completely logical, but when you really deep deep really put yourself in other people's shoes you can see the deep impact that comes from 
someone was being thoughtful and wanted me to feel included. And that creates such a deep, deep connection to a community and builds a company where people want to be in and want to work in. And at the end of the day, creates long lasting employees um, that aren't going to turn over, um, which we don't have a whole lot of turnover. So I want to say that maybe the work that we're doing on that has something to do with it. Um, I'm sure there's many, many different reasons, but making sure people feel included is the most important thing they can possibly do. Yeah, I think you you just hit the nail on the head with that. The, the reasons why more companies should be looking at these types of programs is, is because of the impact it could have on their business and in the retention of employees and the dedication and in, in just their work um, quality is so much better when they feel included, when they feel like they're a part of something. And that's really exciting to see. Um, Can you talk a little bit about the different um, types of diversity that you're looking for in in teams and, and how you guys are tackling that? Yeah, and and we we tackle this on probably many different fronts. So gender diversity is something that we definitely have made a lot of strides on. So we have officially one female on our board, um, and we have put it in our governance bylaws that there will always be a spot held for a female on our board. Um, Yes, we are in California, but we don't necessarily fall Mm -hmm. underneath the requirements for the law that requires a female on the board now, Um, but we're doing that anyway. Um, we're 50% female, C, or 50, yeah, 50% female on our C-suite. Um, we're about 40% on our senior management team. Um, and then I don't have necessarily the stats on how that all breaks out in terms of gender diversity um, for the rest of the organization, but I believe in all we're about 40%, um, maybe 35%, somewhere there, 30 to 40% female across across the business. Um, Now, when you break um, other elements of that down, um, when we look at diversity from nationality, from race, from all those other components, there's so many other different components that go into it as well. Um, Us being a global company, we have employees in five different countries. A lot of our um, international staff have very, very diverse backgrounds from growing up in India to going to school in Switzerland to then living in the United States. Um, So it's not just about maybe the color of someone's skin, but it's the diversity of their experiences. Um, We have another individual who grew up in Chile um, and brings a lot of, um, um, uh, a lot of other cultural diversities to our team around how to, um, you know, support our customers in that zone too, not just from a language perspective, but from a cultural perspective. Um, There's just so many other different ways in which, um, you know, we look at that. Um, We have quite a bit of multilingual um, employees overseas too, where they're speaking four or five different um, languages growing up in many different countries that have been able to get a lot of diverse experiences. Um, and then we've we've got quite a bit of people that, you know, I think I maybe told this story when we were speaking on the panel um, um, over at San Diego Startup Week. Um, you know, the early uh, beginning of our, our company was a bunch of UCSD water polo players. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we have a very disproportional representation of water polo players, you know, on our company. Um, well, that's been a, a big part of our culture is, you know, sports. Um, But looking at different ways in which that plays into our culture um, and the diversity of sports now that we have on our team, too, (laughs) while not, uh, you know, a huge relevant point, but, you know, looking at different ways in which um, we can support those things and making sure that people feel included based on, you know, language, based on um, different countries and cultures that they grew up in, um, how they've, um, you know, grown up here in the United States from different backgrounds from where their families have come from. Um, those are the type of diversity things that we really love to see um, and want to bring those perspectives to our team as well. 